Hello, this is Nancy from the O'Neill Center, and I'm going to talk to you about walking. You can all say you've been walking for 60, 70, 80, 90 years, but let's do some mindful walking, conscious of our posture, conscious of our movements, and what muscles we are actually using. Your feet are going to get a lot of hurting and ankles and knees, but I have a way to help you learn what muscle to use to walk without that pain. So the first thing you want to do is we want to loosen your joints. We don't want to stretch your tendons or stretch your muscles because they're cold. You've just decided to go out for a walk, so your muscles are cold. If you stretch them too tight, what will happen? Just like tapping, they'll stack right back together. So we want to loosen our joints. So we'll just put, start with your foot off the, the heel off the floor and circle your knee. That gets that joint working in the ankle. Do it again on the other foot. And you can then go counterclockwise. And go back to the first foot and go counterclockwise on that one. Now your knees are important and they oftentimes hurt the most when we're out walking. So we want to get them loosened up, your joints, get that arthritis moving a little bit. And it is always easier to walk probably after you've been up for an hour or so when you've got your joints moving to begin with. Don't just jump out of bed at 7 a.m. and say, hey, I'm gonna go take a two mile walk. Well, let's cool out because you won't have gotten yourself moving. So let's bend your knees and circle your knees. I'm gonna turn sideways so you can see that. Just circling your knees. And you can circle them clockwise and then circle the other direction counterclockwise. And if you're real coordinated, you can actually circle one knee at a time and then the other knee going the opposite direction. It looks like that dance where you put your knees in and out. <laughs> but now we're going to do our hips, so we're going to have to stand with your feet a little bit further apart. And we're going to take your hip to one side, to the back the other side to the front, similar to hula dancing. Keep the shoulders still as much as you can and make that movement just in the hips from the waist down. Very good, other direction. Now to get your shoulders and your back and your waist off, and put your arms out to the side as if they are just resting on an armchair and we're just gonna to turn to one side and back to the center. This can be nice and slow, and back to the center. And one more time, side into the center. Okay, and get your elbows moving. Although have you seen people power walking and they're power walking and they're moving their arms and they're wasting lots of energy because if you're walking in a good straight position with your spine in line, pumping the arms, you only need to do that if you're going up a steep hill and you need the extra exertion. Most of the time, your hands just can lay to your side, swing with you, or if you want to do a little bit of movement with them, you can have your hands in your close to where your pockets would be, and you want your elbows to go behind you. But normally, it would just be a nice, easy movement swinging the arms. Okay, and then what you want to make sure is I know you're so conscious of the floor or your walking area that what you want to be walking on is to trip or fall over a crack or a bump, but try to keep your head straight. By doing this, you can put your, your middle finger and your thumb on your collarbone right there and put your index finger on your chin. Now what you've done is got your head aligned and you've actually lengthened your skull, your crown, not the top of your head. You're not gonna look up or down, but you wanna push your neck sort of back so that you've lengthened this crown of your head. And you can usually pick a spot ahead of you a little way so that you can look or watch for that. And you'll see if there's a big cracks on the floor, but always make sure that when you are walking, if you're walking the river trail or the the bikes trail in Marietta. It's pretty smooth, but watch out where the trees have raised the sidewalks around town because those are some big cracks and you can trip over those easily if you're not looking. Now what you want to make sure you're doing is keeping your feet facing the direction that you're going. 
okay? And if you watch people walk, oftentimes they walk with their feet out in either direction, or they just stand like that. But that's almost standing in first position of ballet with your toes pointing opposite. You don't want to, you want to turn your legs and have your toes facing where you want to go. Now, oftentimes people think they need to walk faster, they need to lengthen their stride. No, just take a lot faster, shorter steps. So you don't want to out wide, just stay, go and stagger your legs, front and back, just so that the heel of your one foot is just about even where your foot is on the other side. It's close together. Don't want to be walking with your legs far apart, keeping them as if there's an imaginary line and each foot is on each side. Don't cross them and put them in front, side by side, side by side. Toes facing the direction that you're going to walk. That's the most important thing. It's always fun if you will have a puddle or something and you walk through it, turn around then and look how your feet were. And oftentimes they're not straight, pointing the direction you want to go. Your shoulders can be up, back, and down. Remember the old saying, stand up straight, sit up straight? That throws your shoulders back. And if you sideways, if I stand up straight, like I'm at attention, where are my shoulders? They're certainly not over my hips. They are behind my hips. So we want to make sure your shoulders are over your hips, which requires actually to take your upper body and lean it just slightly forward, just a quarter of an inch gets that shoulders in line with the hips. So your head is aligned, your shoulders are aligned. And now the only thing left that's not aligned is your hips. This is a small movement, but it's important to tuck, tuck your bottom and raise your pelvis. You can do this oftentimes and hold it and think, wow. And then you realize that you're holding on, tightening your seat area. So then you want to relax that. Oftentimes you can relax it by just pounding it a little bit. But when you tuck the pelvis, you automatically tuck that tush. So pound it to relax it and sit. So you're all in a line. Your feet are lined up. Your knees are facing. Your hips are tucked. Your shoulders are forward and your head is where you're supposed to be in the position, slightly back, and on your, resting on your index finger. Now you want to take a step. You notice your arms are going to relax at the side. You're going to do about, about a 50 step on an old metronome that we used to play the piano with, you know, to keep the beat. You want to do about a 50 to 60 beat. That's a normal relaxed walk. Your arms are going to swing. But when you first take that first step, are you going to lead with that foot? Now your shoulders aren't over your hips. So no, you want to lead with your shoulders. So your first movement is your, you slightly, I'll turn to the side, you slightly lean forward and then walk. What that does is put your feet behind you, as you can see. That's where you want them to be. This is almost like a marching because you don't want to use your feet to push off. You don't want your ankles to be sore from pushing too much or the ball of your foot. So what you're gonna do is actually raise your leg, raise your foot with your thigh. It's a large muscle. Oftentimes it's more developed than your ankle. It's not gonna roll or bend. So you wanna just practice bringing your foot up and letting your foot relax. It just can peel off the floor like a banana peel. Just peel it off the floor because it's not gonna do anything. It's not gonna push you off push you forward or back, your thigh is gonna raise you up off the floor. And you're gonna walk almost like a marching, like a prancing a little bit. And you've seen it when people walk with the prance. It's not a speed walk, it's not a race. Feet are straight, feet are going forward. So you've got the dynamics, you've got the basics, but how can you remember all of those things in one walk? You can't. So your first walk, when you get all, you get yourself in line, and then say, I'm gonna walk for five minutes. If you have a timer on your pocket watch, pocket watch, if you have a timer on your cell phone that's going along with you to watch your steps, you can set it for five minutes. And then when you, after you walk for five minutes and that alarm goes off, stop. Look at yourself. Are your feet straight? Have you relaxed your feet into going out again? Where are your hips? Where are your shoulders? 
but concentrate on one thing at a time. Each week you can add to that. The first week you can just concentrate on keeping your feet straight, going in the direction you wanna go. Keeping your feet straight, shortening your stance so that you're not lunging or forward, because you'll find out as you're picking your leg up, picking and walking, but using your muscle, you're not gonna make those great big long strides, which you don't want, you don't need them. Remember, let your arms relax and you're walking by using your legs. So watch your feet, check your feet every five minutes or so, and then the next week you can work on your shoulders, your head, but remember when you first start to take your first walk, lean with your chest first. You're not gonna let yourself fall forward, fall on your face. You'll catch yourself before you do that. So lean with your shoulders and then walk. If your feet are behind you, and you're walking them up and you're taking your time. Enjoy your walk. And now when you come back from your walk, you, you remember if you walk 15 minutes one direction, you're gonna to have to walk 15 minutes back home. So don't walk too far that you're out of breath or exhausted or tired. So when you come back, now your muscles are warm. This is the time you wanna stretch out those muscles, like with this, with your heel forward, stretching them out, leaning down, coming up, stretching it out, leaning it down, coming up. You wanna stretch out all your arms and your legs, bend the waist, swivel, you can actually stagger stance and just let your arms flow freely, your shoulders free. Back. So you're going to be doing that stretching afterwards. You're going to do a flat back stretch, whereas you just come back, bend at the waist, put your back be flat. And then when you're rolling up, bend your knees and roll up, making sure that your shoulders are the last thing that goes up last. It is always good to ground yourself. Get yourself to stand relaxed. Shoulders are relaxed, hands are relaxed, feet are forward, and feel the grounding. We're just grounding yourself into the earth. Hey, if you can have it as hot as it has been, if you go outside in the grass with your shoes off, Get your feet on that ground. The earth has a lot to give you, and you can give right back. So relax and ground yourself. And take a nice deep breath in and out, and enjoy your walk. Remember not to walk too fast, not to walk when it's too hot out either, because you don't want to overexhaust yourself. And we'll see you the next time.